Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Guys. <laughs> Girl, momming, momming still must happen no matter how much I am live streaming. Carpool needed to be done. <laughs> Dog time outside had to be done. All of the things, guys. So I'm sorry. Um, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Um, guys, I'm gonna just be. I'm gonna be honest, because you know that's that's all I can do. Um, I'm at like 37 minutes, so I haven't even finished the whole thing. I'm in the chapter called pro life. So just so you guys know. I haven't seen the whole thing. So we are probably going to do this again later on this afternoon, but I'm going to give you my first impressions. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Jasmine plus three. Yes. Like this live guys. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, okay. I think I'm good on sound. Um, okay. Um, Guys, you know I was rushing. I was rushing, rushing, rushing. So this morning, I had I don't even know if any of y'all messaged me or not, but if you have not, shame on you because guys, I did not even know. We went to sleep on time last night. Like not that there's a time, but we went to sleep to get like some rest. My rest has been awful for the past 2 weeks, 2 3 weeks. It's been awful. Um the dogs, my dog has uh ear infection, all kinds of things. She's 15. It's been a lot of drama. So uh, it's been the drama. So um, I love saying it like that because, you know, you know who says it drama. Um, anyway, I get up this morning and I'm checking my emails. You know, I had to make my husband his lunch, all of the things. And then I see, oh, OK, sir. OK, sir. OK, OK, <laughs> OK. Yes, guys, if you did not know, Martin Lewis dropped episode three. So if you didn't know, now you know. The infamous, <laughs> the man who's getting all of the interviews um, and all of the information and who is not being called a troll, a stalker, authorities are not being notified as far as I know. All of the things, this guy is getting unfettered access and no one's calling uh, the authorities on this man. Um, not saying that they should. I'm just saying that if it was anybody else, any of us melanated females, it would be a problem. Um, but girl, okay. <laughs> I'm just saying, because uh, this is first impressions, right? We're giving first impressions. Um, I'm going to drop the call in because I have not seen the whole thing. Maybe some of you guys have. Um I, I will admit, like, I sometimes don't like to hear too much from other people until I get to formulate my own opinion. But this is a story that we've heard time after time after time after time. I think in my synopsis, um, in the description box, I haven't filled out my whole description box yet for this live. Um, but it says, Mommy, hush, stop trying to, Mommy, stop, stop. <laughs> Y'all, I guess I'm going to learn how to get back into my office. I've just, I've spoiled myself with setting up like a whole nother little setup in my bedroom. And I like it so much because there's more light in here. There's more, you know, like I'm not confined by the desk. So uh, it's just a whole different type of setup. But the dogs, girl, they just, they're so much more vocal in here than they are in my office. Cause in my office, they kind of have to come in and sit down. They actually have beds and stuff in here. So I think they feel more free to be themselves and all that. So anyway, in my description box, I think I put something about like the story that just never ends. It's the never ending story of a dysfunctional relationship that is all playing out on YouTube. Like if someone were to ask me, what is this all about? Um, it's about a woman who decided that she wanted to document her life. Um, specifically, this is a this is a chapter in her life where she's having her first relationship with a man, uh, a man child by the name of Jeremy Splash the Don, and he is bussing in her guts and got her pregnant with twins. 
And um, this is the story of their dysfunctional relationship that she is documenting on YouTube and admittedly in an interview with LaToya forever says that she only puts out the good stuff. Why, why should I put out the bad stuff and be scrutinized for it? I'd just rather be, and I'm paraphrasing, scrutinized for just putting out the good stuff, you know, having the spin that everything is wonderful, even though everyone knows behind the scenes, you're living your life like everybody else. I mean, am I getting this kind of like, that's just my first, that's my opinion um, as someone who really hasn't, you know what I mean? Like I haven't been watching this as it's been playing out. I've, I'm playing catch up with you guys. So I don't really have, um, preconceived notions about this woman other than I just cannot believe every single time something comes out that, that you actually think that this is something good to put out. Like, okay. <laughs> but yeah, guys, we're at episode three. Let me uh, get a temperature check of the room. How's everybody doing? Pineapples, Miss Pam, D Rut, Gang Stars, Lit Shorts, and uh, good at everything with some honorable mentions um, of the Gang Stars. But guys, yes, we are at episode three now. Okay. Um, what more could there be to tell? I I'm sure a lot more. This episode opens up with them talking about. Um, a woman who lived at the apartment complex where they were living and basically the pool party or the outdoor event that was happening and Jeremy connected with the lady who lived, who was a neighbor and the mayhem that ensued in what happens if you talk to Jeremy Postel just a few minutes too long. Okay. And if he connects with you on Insta. All right. Um, Pretty neat. Good morning, Jeannie. Good morning, Kitten Zombie Girl. Kitten Zombie dropped that TT yesterday. Um, I haven't made it back over there. I don't know. Like, if you guys still want a full reaction to the Gerard video, I know other people have gone through it. Um, and I'm sure that there's plenty of reactions on that. If you guys want a deep dive over here, we can do that. Um, Maybe we'll do that on Saturday or something and just and go through it. If you don't mind, Kitten Zombie, I did share your link. But thank you so much for posting that because, um, girl, you know, a lot of us out here on the YouTube streets are watching so others don't have to. And we can uh, give you those good synopsises or or Kitten Zombie posting those lives that you may have missed. So if you missed uh, Gerard Webb, uh, Olivia's husband, Going in on that ass, go ahead, click on my video from yesterday. Um, and in the first pinned comment, you will see the link, or just go ahead and search Kitten Zombie's name and you will find the video. Okay. Um, Ruby Shabazz, good morning. Hey, double H. I'm sorry, Boo Boo. Hi, Boo Boo. Hi, hi, Ruby. What's going on? Liz Jim, Red Pill, what's going on? Red Pill, I never asked you. Um, do you watch Westworld? V, hi, boo-boo, bougie gang, stand up, good morning, hey, Tennessee, hi, boo-boo, hey, boo-boo, what's going on, Jasmine plus three, yes, good morning, hun, good morning, V, for the two times, good morning, let's see, I think I said D-Rut already, um, is that Johnny Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt, remember that when we were kids, John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt, his name is my name too. Whenever we go out, the people always shout. There goes John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. Da, 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 da. Okay, so 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 so. Is it so so or just so so Jeff? So 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 fabulous. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, live, laugh, love. Anisha. Good morning. Miss Pam, there you go again. Good morning, Tammy Ray. What's good? What's good? Miss Pam, what's good? Tammy Ray, Miss True Redbone. How are you, my love? Good morning. Hi, Nicole. Hey, Nicole. What's going on, girl? Shay, what's going on? Verena. Hi, boo boo. Good morning. Hi, Nicole. Nicole again for the two, three times. Good morning. Mastermind. Hi. Hey, boo. Shy Town, good morning. Stand up. Yes, yes. Good morning. Guys, I did not know Lil Dirk was from Chicago. He's from Englewood with an E. Like, I'm from Englewood with an E. 
um, New Jersey. So I thought Lil Dirk was from like the Bahamas or something. His accent is, boy, where are you from? Okay. And I didn't know he was almost 30. I, I was like, I was... I was a little bit shocked that he was almost 30 or he is almost 30, excuse me, and that he is from Chi-Town. Okay. Chi is Chi-Town Fit Queen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Chicago. Good morning. Brown sugar. Hi, boo-boo. Good morning, guys. Everybody say hi to somebody. Make a friend in the chat, even if it's just for the live. Just, you know, be friendly. Um some people feel like this is a little bit of a tough crowd. I have gotten some feedback, but I said, you know, this is a, this is a collective of some very opinionated women and we say it respectfully. We say what we mean, but we don't say it mean, right? Sassy Scorpio. Good morning, hon. Hi. Hey girl. Hey, yes, we are sassy. Uh, we are opinionated and we say what we mean, but we're not going to say it mean. Okay. Don't be intimidated by the, um, by the power and the juice up in here. It is okay. Uh, pretty neat. Good morning. Did I miss you, boo boo? Anybody that I missed, Liz, Jim, good morning, hun. Good morning, everyone. I hope I didn't miss anyone. If I missed anyone, y'all, lit shorts, good morning. Um, I don't know if I missed anyone, but if I missed you, I'm sorry. I'm only, I'm just a human being having a, uh, having this experience out here in the world with you guys. What's what's going on? Oh, yes, birthdays are coming through. Okay. Okay. All right, guys, let's get to it, okay? Um Keisha has to want to be picked up for a show. Girl, this is a lot of effort. This is a lot of running your life off a cliff. To me, I'm going to be real honest, I I would be concerned if I were a friend or a family member at the at the destructiveness that uh that is taking place in really trying to make your like i missed you hi danny hi boo boo good morning uh once upon a twin mom life good morning boo boo i would be concerned i really would i would be concerned at the sheer dysfunction that was going on if that was my sister i would be going to sleep crying at night. Um, I'm, you know, I, I've been in a situation before where I was concerned, um, about a sister, you know, I've got three. So, um, I was in a situation, I mean, who's not concerned about your family period at any point. Right. Um, I was in a situation once upon a time when I was very concerned about one of my sisters and, um, couldn't sleep at night. You know what I mean? I've, I've probably had occasions where I've probably been concerned about all of them and maybe they concerned about me. Who knows? Cause we love each other. Right. I could not be happy knowing my sister is going through so much. Miss Mabes, is that you boo boo? Let me see. Yes. Miss Mabes. Good morning. Um, I can't imagine the amount of, I need you guys to mind your business. I need you guys to ride this out. This is going to be a million dollar script. This is going to be a $2 million script. Tyler Perry is going to pay me for this one day. I don't know, but I could not throw myself. Um, I don't understand the fascination with keeping this going. I just don't. Now, Martin is doing his job. He's doing what he does on his channel and okay, fine. Um, as far as I, I don't understand if Keisha doesn't understand, we don't have to eat what you're shitting. Like if you want us to hear something that people aren't hearing and people aren't understanding, you're just going to have to get over it. You're just going to have to get over it. Everybody is not going to be on the same page with you. You're just going to have to move on. Like at the end of the day, there's going to just be people that think you're full of shit. There's going to be people that don't respect your walk. There's going to be people who are going to knock your hustle. There are going to be people that don't give a shit. And at the end of the day, I think she's just going to have to understand that. Like you can't force people to get with your vibe. 
Like to me, it's just ridiculous that I think she just wants everybody to get on the same page with her and feel like, oh, poor Keisha was wronged. Or wow, Ashley is a side chick. Or you had no right. I mean, today, this is what I heard. This is what I heard that kind of like made me understand a little bit more. This is the first real man, and I'm using air quotes, um, that she ever talked to. Because whenever she was a lesbian, okay? <laughs> okay, whenever she was a lesbian for the period, when Keisha said in the Latoya forever, I'm just not accepting the fact that I dated women. I don't want to, I, I don't have the words, guys. Uh, to quote verbatim, but basically she was rejecting the fact that she was living and dating and operating in the LGBTQA world as a participant of the uh, the sisters of Safro, the the you know, look, I don't want to disrespect it. So the the women who enjoy other women crew, right? And there's Girl, I don't even have to say there's nothing wrong with that. Like, that's your lifestyle. Cool, girl, have it. Um, for whatever reason, you were a lesbian or playing one for your YouTube channel, whatever you want to call it, okay, at a certain point in your life. But she said in her LaToya Forever interview that she was not accepting of that. She was rejecting of that lifestyle. She barely wanted to call herself straight. If you're not straight, what are you? If you're not a lesbian, what are you? I'm just Keisha. So Keisha, who has relations with men, with women, what? Like what? Like you're open sexually, you're sexually fluid, you're bisexual. Latoya asked her, she said, no, she's not bisexual. Like, girl, if you're not confused, if you're not sexually ambiguous, can't, why can't you just say straight or are you not straight? Like, I don't get it. I, I don't understand this woman for a woman to be almost 30 for a woman to have three kids for someone who seems to be so deliberate in her actions and very calculated and very strategic about what she's doing. The ambiguity over the things is interesting to me, how you pick a side for some things, how you can state with such conviction that you're being trolled, you're being bullied, you're being all of those things, but you can't put a name to what you do when you get up in the bedroom. You can't just say I'm straight. For a period of time, I experimented um, as a lesbian. I thought that that was for me um, or I was bisexual, like however you want to say it. And because in 2022, if there has ever been a time for people to accept people and their sexual ambiguity and their sexual fluidness and they're just right to do whatever the hell they want with their putty cat, girl, it's today. Okay. It's today. Girl, it's today. So you can say what you want. Like, you know what I mean? People, people may care, but you make your own money. Nobody cares. Right. Um, so I don't know. It's just very weird to me. She's a very interesting woman. I'm going to put it like that from the standpoint of just the, uh, I, I don't even know. She's very um, strategic in certain things and other things. It's like, um, you know, it's just me. It's just, I'm just Keisha. And then, um, okay. So the video starts out talking about um, the neighbor. Uh, the neighbor. Um, I don't know what you guys were they calling her. That wasn't Sandy Springs. That wasn't uh, Miss Sandy Springs. That was I don't know. I forgot what the nickname was for her. But whatever. That's the one that lived in the apartment that that maybe um, something could have popped off, but it didn't get a chance to because Jeremy got squashed uh, very soon. You're confused. Confused about what? Confused. She's confused. Um. She's confused. Okay, let's see. Tammy, what did you say? That girl said she was forced into two relationships with women. Yeah, okay. Who who forced her? I mean, who someone said you must be in a relationship or she got bullied into it. Girl, if you're look, 
I don't know. I, I've never lived that life before. I never had friends push me into doing stuff that I did not want to do and felt like I had to. Like, I've just never, I'm not cut from that cloth. Um, I've never had people push me into a relationship with, weird, with, with um, I don't even want to say weird people, into weird situations that I didn't no, like just accept it. Like at the end of the day, girl, you was living your life. You were living uh, a certain type of lifestyle. And if you don't agree with it now and you felt like it was peer pressure, call it that. But it's not bullying and it's not being forced. OK. Um. Anyway, three kids, no ring, the audacity. <sighs> That's a whole situation right there, girl. Um. So. Martin starts to peel back and starts to set the foundation. Okay. Um, I, I don't know the whole direction it's going, but he's starting to peel back and going into, I think some of the feedback. Okay. And the feedback was not good. So episode one, you know, we see what's going on. We hear about the baby, you know, this story, honestly, I don't want to say it like it's an, I'm not judging his episode because I haven't seen the whole thing yet. But as far as what we've seen so far, it starts out with Keisha, the baby and Jeremy. Okay. Then the next episode, we're going into like the day of reckoning, a lot of the discrepancies in the relationship and how it was conveyed to Keisha's audience and just the discrepancies. It's like he said, she said, and she said. So it's like the three different versions of what is actually going on. So we find out what happened, what the drama is all about. Um, and then we find out the different versions of the stories and the conflict. And now we're getting into um, somewhat of damage control, right? Um, is just my first impressions of what's going on here because we we're bringing out the big guns. Brittany, Brittany is the one who said she's defending her friend, and Keisha said, "I never asked you to do that." And then Keisha has to come back and clean up her mess and say, "Well, I actually did, but I didn't ask you to say so much." Okay, um, and then it was a problem, and we see that these two are no longer friends anymore. Right? Um, so let me because I did load up some pictures, right? Okay, so we're seeing um, that the that the friendship, um, you know, kind of, it, it basically, it devolved and it went all the way downhill, basically, right? Um, I was about to say, what is that? Okay. Um, all right. Tammy, she said they forced her. This girl was crazy. She was she was with those women because she wanted to be. Um, and, you know, sometimes people decide. Look, back to her and Jeremy. Jeremy is the first man that I think really busted her down. He might have been the first man to make her have an orgasm or bring her to orgasm. This is the guy who she has experienced lots and lots of sex with. I mean, the guy came, he never left. They've been sleeping in the same bed together. Um, I don't under, I still don't understand. So when uh, Brittany was talking to Martin and she said, you know, is this how guys are supposed to act? Like she was literally clueless about a relationship between a man and a woman. And I get it. You're 20 something years old. All of a sudden you've got duffel bag boy coming to the door and he never leaves. You guys are laying up and, and having sex, all of these things. He's never home. Um, you know, is this how it's supposed to be? Because he's just never here. That was interesting, right? Um, the fact that she pushed him away when Brittany was saying that she wanted love and comfort and all of the things, well, then why didn't you ask for it? If you wanted comfort and stroking and love and attention, but you're telling him, I don't want to, men, men are very different. And it's not to say she should have sex if she didn't want to, because that's what he wanted. But maybe if you two would have been more connected 
as a couple, he would have known how to deal with you and you would have known how to deal with him. Okay. Um, okay. So you're thinking it's pay for play. So payola really, I know what you mean by what you're saying. You, you think that she's, she's paying, she's paying for play. Okay. Um, payola really is, you know what payola is, uh, more as it, as it, applies to the music industry, but I get what you're saying. You're, you're saying that you feel like this was a pay, a pay for play situation that Martin is being paid. Martin has said on numerous occasions, he's not being paid keys to heaven. Good morning. Lil Isha. Good morning. Mastermind. Good morning, hun. Good morning. Everyone coming in. If I missed you hit the like button for me, please. I would so appreciate it. Okay. Y'all who is her manager girl? That person is, you know who her manager is? Um, right here. Okay. I wish I still had that picture of Chris Jenner, but we already know that's not true. Cause girl, if Chris Jenner was her manager, first of all, girl, those pockets would be fat. Cause you know, Chris, Chris brokers, those, those billion dollar potential contracts. Right. And she wouldn't have her co-signing a window, a door, a girl, a bathtub by the window. Okay. Or filming the construction of the reconstruction, the redecorating, the renovations, <laughs> and showing the bath, the bathtub in the uh in the bedroom. Okay, but yeah, we don't know. That's her manager right there, Mr. X. Manager X. Okay. V, what do you say? Martin, this episode was all over the place. It was boring and one-sided, one side Keisha. Just hurry up and end this. Okay, girl, the streets are talking. Okay, we'll go and check out the comments too. I'm assuming they're in the standard shambles. Um, Chad, please. Okay, Brit is slow AF. You guys think uh, Marsha Party of Five is, is, um, is, is slow? <laughs> I was about to say, sis, 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 slow. I guess I just did. Um, Duffel Bag Boy, I said it. I did. I did. Okay. Um, Keisha has a brother and a father. She had examples. Well, I, me personally, if my sisters were going through something like this and I better have a good explanation as to what's going on so I could keep my mouth shut, I would not be happy, um, with this display on the internet and neither would my family. Like we, that, that would just not, that couldn't occur. Okay. Um, I don't, I, I have to assume that this is, there's some sort of end game here, which includes trying to get a movie produced on this topic. Cause I just don't get it. I don't understand why she thinks that people are interested in hearing this over and over and over again. Um, it's weird. The whole part, I think with Ariel, that whole thing um, it's just, it's too much. Like, aren't you tired of like, what's the point in all of this? I want to know not so much Martin telling the story. Obviously he's telling the story because she wants this story told. I don't know if it's that Keisha wants us to buy in guys. Remember when the iPods first came out and those things were so freaking long and they looked like um, golf tea sticks. I mean, they're so freaking long. Look at that. Um, I don't understand why she is so adamant about people buying this romance. Like at the end of the day, there does she has she not ever had a friend that everybody hated your boyfriend? Maybe she doesn't know about the phenomenon of everybody hating your boyfriend or everyone hating your husband, or nobody liking who you're with, or people just kind of waiting around for y'all to break up. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not saying that that's anybody in here, but at the end of the day, I am quite sure most of you have experienced a friend who is dating or is with, is married, baby daddy, whatever the case might be, with someone that you're not fucking with, right? Right? 
This movie has been done a million times. This is the oldest movie ever. Girl dates a guy. Now, the fact that she was so willing to allow him to have a hall pass for sex because she was, you know, look, this is the deal. This is what I'm going to say about being a woman, okay? You cannot continue to play damsel in distress and think that everybody is going to play with you, okay? At a certain point in your life, you got to grow the fuck up, okay? And the fact that you were inexperienced sexually and having your first set of babies and you did a, you had a um, hall pass for this man to be able to go run and, and, and whip that dick around town. That's your bad. That's your stupid. That's your, that's your, my bad sis. You should have never opened up that Pandora's box. You should have never allowed him to do that. And if you wanted to um, keep your man only to you, then you should have just let him go out and legit cheat behind your back. And then you make the decisions rather than opening the door and feeling away. Okay. Because it, it's nobody feels sorry for you. I'm, I, I'm not even sorry to say people don't feel sorry because this is something that you opted into. Now, the fact of how it's gone down and the repercussions of what you say that you're having to endure, that's the wages of dealing with a fuck boy. You're dealing with a guy who people feel like you were on one track, you got with this guy and you went on another track. There, there are people who feel a way, they have opinions, whether they feel something visceral about it or they just think you're stupid or they could have seen the story going differently or just have opinions on it. At the end of the day, that's what happens when you choose to put a price tag on your life. When you decide to sell your life for coin on this internet, that's what happens, sis. I don't understand how you don't understand that you are selling your story. And the fact that people don't vibe with it. You think that the shade room is mad when people come tear up their comments? That's what they want because guess what? They're selling advertising. They're selling promo spots. They've got a website that they're directing people to. They don't care if people come happy, people come sad, people come mad, people come whatever. They just want people to come. And as someone who's in social media, you would expect that Keisha could understand that. You should just want people to come. How they come is not your business. I hope that makes sense. To someone out here, I think it probably makes sense. It's not your business. Do you think that Macy's, Neiman Marcus, whomever cares who is walking in the door and how? As long as you're coming in the door with some money, some credit cards, the business of wanting to shop, they don't care. For all of the people who feel like I need to be dressed a certain way, I need to act a certain way, they're doing this, they're doing that, they're watching. Girl, handle your, you go, girl, you coming to shop? You coming to shop. The store does not care. For some reason, Keisha feels like she wants to hand pick her customers. The fact that we're sitting and like I'm talking on this topic right now, even though she has a whole reaction channel or drama channel um, depicting the events surrounding the debacle, the demise of a very dysfunctional relationship, in my opinion, um, it's a problem. She only wants people to be interested in her story if they're fucking fangirling over her. And that's not promised, boo-boo. Okay? She could have really took control of the situation leveled up. There are two women on here that have that have done Raven and uh, another girl who is a twin. Are you talking about the little Kelsey? Kelsey and what's her name? The uh, The little hair girl twins from Atlanta? And forgive me, I don't can't, I can't remember their names, but the Kelsey, I know one's name's Kelsey, the, the the twins that have been on YouTube forever. Um 
Raven, girl, there's plenty. Raven, you know, Raven is a huge success story, but Raven, you know, Raven, first of all, Raven's a Virgo. Okay, can we just put that right there? You know what I'm saying? Girl, that Virgo nature, yeah, you know, it's it's uh she has it in her, okay? Um, Keisha is uh Keisha expects everything to operate like it's high school and the world does not operate on high school rules. Good morning, Taylor XO. What's going on, boo-boo? How are you? Um, Keisha needs to grow up. This is what I'm going to say. She needs to grow up. She needs to get up and she needs to show up. At the end of the day, you can't pick your customers. When you open up the door, to your store. Let's just let's just call this a store. You've opened a boutique. When you open up your boutique, you know, there are stores out here. There are boutiques that have been um called out for being too selective. You know, you've got the buzzer on the door and you don't like the way people are dressed and you don't let people in. You can't be selective on this social media about who consumes your media and how people want to talk about it. And just because you don't fucking like it doesn't mean that you get to harass them with police action. That's called being a fucking Karen. Okay. Okay. That's what we call Karenism. Okay. And you, and you can be a whole black Karen. Okay. Period. Karens are Karens are Karens. Just because you don't like what people are saying doesn't make me or anyone else a Karen. Okay. All right. Um, she saw her on the mid-season trailer of Love and Marriage Huntsville. Maybe she's trying to become part of that show, Love and Marriage. Well, first of all, you have to be in some love and then you have to be in some marriage. Now, if there is going to be a Love and Marriage Atlanta, I would assume they're going to do married couples. Like, I'm sorry. Um, just because you live like you're married, just because you like to play house, like, for instance, I mean, just because you live together doesn't mean that people are under the preconceived notion that you and Jeremy are married. You're not married. And at the end of the day, there are people who are married who are involved in like really jacked up, horrible relationships. And I would if I were a pastor and I saw what was going on with these two, unless I knew certified this was some bullshit and you guys were just playing for the TV, I would tell you guys. Yeah, no, I'm not going to marry you. It's like some damn Rashida and Kurt Frost. Let Rashida tell us she's been having problems with Kurt for years. But they stay together for 20 years because Rashida loves his rusty ass, okay? But at the end of the day, um, Rashida can't get up here on this internet big upping her relationship because people know what it's all about and know that it's sort of a sham. But girl, if you like it, we love it. If you're happy, we don't have to. I mean, we got our own shit going on. You know what I'm saying? Like if someone wants to live in misery, they can. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not going to stop them. But back to my original point, like if this was my sister, I would be very concerned just to be honest, because I don't I wouldn't understand what are you doing? But unless you're telling me that this is some million dollar script you're getting ready to sell then I really wouldn't understand it. And I would have a problem. Remember when Solange came at, at Jay-Z? Like, y'all can think it's stage. Y'all can think whatever it is. But if she was not happy because he was being foul in, his, in her sister's company, and she was, like, really pissed off, and they've also gone through trauma of their father and what has gone on with their mother. There's a reason why Matthew and Tina are divorced, right? There's a reason why Tina has a whole nother husband now, right? So these girls have gone through some trauma. And she doesn't like seeing her sister fucked with. And maybe as strong as Beyonce is, you know, the shoes on my feet, I bought them. The rocks I'm rocking, I bought them. Because I depend on me, no matter how much money Beyonce has in her account. At the end of the day, this is a man that she's been with for damn near almost, almost could be, you may as well say 15, almost damn 20 years. 50, 11. She's got three kids with him. She loves his rusty ass. And we don't know what they go through behind the doors.
right? And Solange feels a way. Fact is, you would think Miss Spellman would know better than to continue to mess with a man who got another woman pregnant twice and cheated with the same. Well, clearly, so she may know better, but she, you know, she's obviously operating with a in a in some sort of a, a deficit situation, um, either uh, you know low self esteem. Okay, so the esteem is running. So if we're looking at the gas meter, yeah, the esteem tank is running empty. The self worth. So I guess is that the same thing? Self esteem, her, 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 her visual of what her worth is, right? Um, like her bad bitch meter is empty. Her self esteem meter is empty. Her friend meter might be running on empty because they might just be like, you know what? I'm tired of talking. We're just going to like, I'm just going to let her do what she does and she's going to handle it how she wants to handle it. And if her happy rests in this dysfunction, then I'm just going to let her have it. You know, I don't know if that's the case, but for me, with my sisters, with my friends, with people that I love, that would be what she's doing would be a problem. It would be a problem. Now, would it be to the point that I'm going to force you to try to do things that you don't want to do, which is um, break up with the guy? No. Uh, why are they not married? Because Keisha allegedly turned him down. And because... I think he's just a fuck boy. Like at the end of the day, you know, there's always, there's always the friends. I just dropped the call in guys. Um, there's always the friend who always wants to talk about how they could be married and how they're running shit. And that's the main one, um, who always gets done, done up <laughs> and doesn't seem to have what they want. Like, you know, I've had the friends over the years. Like I was, I the last one. Yeah, I haven't had a friend get married in a while because maybe I was one of the last ones to get married, okay? Um, but girl, I'm I'm still on my first, right? I've got friends. Girl. I definitely have friends who've been married twice and a couple who've been married three times. <laughs> okay. Um I have a friend that when my relationship, so she was married twice by that point. And by the time I got married and definitely by the time I had my daughter, I'm not going to say too much because I don't want it to, I don't want any friend who's potentially listening to feel put on. But if you're in the two or more, well, it could be you. Um, <laughs> but when I had my daughter, um, I feel like it really, that really became a problem. Okay. Um, because I'm going to say it like this. When you're doing things that, that your friends haven't done, sometimes the friend with the big head that doesn't realize that they're really in the shits, but they thought that they were, they were, they were a baddie restart. They start to, they, they start to have their day of reckoning. Okay. Um, when you, when you were the big fish in the little pond, Miss Keisha, and then now you've gotten outside of her. the reason why I think Keisha talks about college and high school so much is because those were her glory days. Keisha peaked early, right? She took the camera out. She, she started doing something people weren't doing at the time, even though people were vlogging, but the numbers and people were very discreet about it, things like that. I think that she was used to being a big fish in a very little pond and feeling away, feeling big. Okay. With her little frame, she was feeling big. The glam twins. Yes. Kendra and Kelsey. Right. Um, I think she was feeling away. And now that people are surpassing her, the people who she came up with are in the millions. Okay. People that she 
that they're just doing different things. They're getting bigger on Instagram. They're getting bigger on TikTok. They're just getting bigger. They're doing other things. They're moving on. They're getting married. They are, they are, they're not showing up to events by themselves. They're not being embarrassed on Instagram. Their man is not showing up fucking wasted, whatever it is, wasted on this internet. They're not having to deal with. So I don't know if Keisha just feels like, well, if this is what I'm going to have to deal with, I'm just going to deal with it publicly. I, I don't get it personally. Like Keisha, to me, the whole thing of trying to be cute on a Friday and Saturday night and have attitude and be in her bustier and talk all kinds of crap. You see what the you see, like nobody's really people are here for it because they they're laughing. And then you have the night where she's giving, like, I guess, come have dinner with me. I mean, that's cute and everything. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't really have advice to help Keisha in terms of what she's doing, what she's not doing, how to make things better. Um, me personally, um, I know Pineapple said this before. Pineapples, I don't know if you're still here. Uh, good morning to everyone who's come in. Jasmine Brown. Uh, is it Redion? Um, SK Lee. Hello. Hi, Tia Anita. Hello, everyone coming in. Um, when she started doing, when she purchased the home and the renovation content was quite interesting, I think people were excited, but when people are seeing like the, the money pit shenanigans, I think she feels a little, I think when Keisha starts to feel the ridicule and the pinch of thing of people not jumping on the Keisha bus, she gets really mad. And then she's like, I'm going to take it away from you. Just like Jeremy, you know, Jeremy, she let Jeremy go out here and screw when she got a whiff that Jeremy was filling himself and he was enjoying the company of one person specifically that she could not control like, from one way or the other through him uh, through her trying to low key passive aggressive be friends with someone who you should never be friends with, namely the woman who's fucking your man. Okay, period. Like that's just dumb. Where is your sister and your mother to tell you not to do stupid shit like that? Um, she gets mad. She gets mad, and she gets mad at the wrong people. She gets mad at the people trying to give her decent advice, which is, girl, what the fuck are you doing? Okay. Uh, her having his babies meant nothing to him because he's a street dude. There's some men who don't mind. Look at Future. I hate to pick on Future all the time, but this man got kids everywhere, okay? And if she's if she's of a of the look, look, you know what I'm saying? Like Taylor, to you, that's a problem. To her, clearly it's not a problem. She's just more mad at what was done to her. It's always something that was done to her. For somebody who tries to be such a boss, she really portrays herself as such a victim. Self-esteem low, money low, views low, everything low. Girl, okay? Low, low. She will forever keep that cheater to make it seem like she won. You're not winning when you got a damn loser on your side. You know what I'm saying? You're only as strong as the weakest link. And if the weakest link is duffel bag boy loser, isn't paying child support, hasn't signed the birth certificate of your only son, you can't be proud of that, okay? You can't be as a man. And you know what? I don't even know from a male perspective what would make a man proud, but just as a person, <laughs> as a person, I cannot imagine a human out here um, not having feelings in a negative way about not showing up for your babies, okay? I just can't. Keisha, you will never be a victim because you willingly lent your man out and chose to stay when you saw him, when you saw he wasn't stopping, point blank, this girl is sickening and needs it needs help. And so people might say, well, why are you watching? Because people like a train wreck. People, how many people slow down when you see a car wreck on the highway? People want to see, do you know why people love train wrecks? There's lots of psychology around it. People want to see what happened because your brain, number one, your brain wants to understand and reconcile. Then you always ask, what happened? Your first instinct is what happened? 
You know why we want to know what happened? We can see what happened, but our brain wants to understand. And the reason why is because we want to know and understand so it doesn't happen to us. There's a reason why when people ask what happened, it's like, oh, you overcorrected. Oh, you were driving too fast. Oh, somebody was driving fast and slammed you from behind. Oh my God. If you're driving too fast, guess what? People are not going to feel sorry for you. If someone, if you were a victim, then people are going to be like, oh my God, can you believe that happened? That person had been drinking. No, they weren't legally drunk, but they just came from like a two martini lunch or whatever. And they weren't paying attention. They were texting. So now it's someone to blame. There's always going to be a bad guy, right? So you see this train wreck happening of a relationship of dysfunction and she chose a very good bad guy. She to chose the long, lanky, duffel bag fuck boy who likes to cheat and who likes to show up on Instagram saucy. So it still makes her, who is in the shits, the former won't admit to being a lesbian straight girl who sent her man out to go get putty cat from someone else, go use someone else's putty cat while she was being selfish and didn't want to give up the box, her mouth, whatever. And rightfully so, if she was medically not able, fine. But at the end of the day, you sent him out there, which to me was not a generous act. That was a selfish act because you put him out there on the streets to get putty cat. And then you want to make him a villain for doing so. So he gets to wear the cheater t-shirt and you get to be the, the angel queen because you let him go get some putty cat and use another woman. And you get to sit around smelling like a rose, like you're some damn uh, commander's wife in the, in the freaking handmaiden's tale. Okay. I hope these three girls have a way more respect for themselves. Uh, girl, we're going to focus square in on the mama. I, I don't know. We don't know what's going to happen in the future. And I can guarantee you one thing, um, girl, by the time we'll even know anything about that, I won't be covering this story. I can guarantee you that. Um, I won't be covering this. <laughs> Um, I wouldn't stay with a man who doesn't want to marry me. Well, cause you've got standards, boo boo. Okay. Um, self-esteem in hell. Okay. That's where I, that's where I dropped the link. Okay. Um, sassy Scorpio. What do you say? I want her to just go away. Wow. So let me ask you this sassy Scorpio. Gosh, why is this so slow? Okay, here we go. So people who want this to just go away, do you guys still enjoy this conversation? Because my thing is this, if, if she's so annoying, then is it just really more of the, um, the reactions, the conversation just revolving around relationship? It doesn't matter who it is. Because that's what I would like to know. I know a lot of you guys are really tired of some of these stories, some of these particular channels or stories, period. I would love to know, um, is it the stories we're showing up for? Is it me? <laughs> Maybe I need to do a poll. Is it me? Is it just the overarching story or is it the reactions on these people, the, the actual reactions on these folks? Um, is it just the scenarios and stories in general or is it just your girl? Is it bougie gang? Okay. You know, cause we do have a nice community here. Maybe it's not me. Maybe it's y'all. You guys all just like to get together. Okay. Um, maybe I need to put that in a poll. All right. Um, but yeah, first impressions, you know, what I'm going to say is we're hearing the story and, um, Raven and Deara are winning because, you know, they got it. Look, Keisha is trying, right? Keisha calls herself a businesswoman. She's trying. Um, what I would say is that whoever her management is, Key Cosmetics, I'm going to be serious here. Now, Key Cosmetics, I don't know anything about them, but Key, Keisha, 
with you having so let's say all the girls when 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 doing all the palettes was a thing i haven't been in ulta in a minute i don't know who's doing a palette i don't know who's collabing i don't know but when you got things like huda beauty you got il maquillage you've got the collaborations at ulta all the time with this influencer that influencer the fact that you were were at um half a million which i guess she still is but not for long just in my opinion cuz i already get i already said this at the beginning of the year she'll be at 499 by summer um the fact that you that you are ambassador for a brand called key cosmetics and key cosmetics was not something that as a boss you thought of doing like the fact that you are representing a brand that is so close in name to yours, me personally, I would never have done, okay? Because you are embedding yourself with a brand that you don't even have ownership in. Now, does she have a percentage ownership? I don't know. I'm assuming not because it's a mom and two daughters, right? But there's a whole brand out here, Key Cosmetics. How You think Kim Kardashian would go and represent a cosmetics brand that was not hers. When Kim was showing face for Kylie's, that didn't last very long because Kim is her own shit, right? Why should I go make someone else money even if it's my sister? Like at the end of the day, the fact that you are profiling for a company that your name starts, K-E-E, -E, like that would be like me going and representing for a brand called Francoise. My name is Francoise, okay? Why would I go rep for a brand called Francoise? I'm going to start my own Francoise shit. You know what I'm saying? Like the fact that you missed the boat on a makeup brand for yourself called Key Cosmetics, I find fascinating. And that you would take an ambassadorship. I don't know if they're cutting you a check or not. But at the end of the day, that was a complete miss. Period. It's just a miss. It's a missed opportunity that when you see um, Deara starting Lorve, like, honestly, um, my sunglasses would have been called Deara Taylor. They would have been having a big DT on the side. Lorve, okay, fine. It's a nice, nice sounding, flowy type of French sounding name. But at the end of the day, girl, it would have been Deara, Deara Taylor all day. Okay. Don't forget my name. Now, how does Lorve fit in? I don't know, but not my problem. Um, but at the end of the day, she's bossing. Raven, she's bossing. Raven is making herself into somewhat of a B. Smith, a Martha Stewart. She loves um, doing house housewifing in a modern way. No husband, single mom. She is housewifing. She is working from home. She's making a beautiful home. She is doing things, um, lifestyle branding. She is B smithing and Martha stewarding for the 2022s. Okay. Um, we see what she's doing. Keisha girl, you missed the boat. You're selling hair. Um, people are moving to their natural hair. People are loving braids. Are people still wearing wigs and weaves? Absolutely. But this wig and weave brand should, in my opinion, be synonymous with your name. And I'm not giving any more advice, guys. I'm just not. Um, but at the end of the day, the fact that you are frontlining for a business that really the name, the branding should, like, I would have just turned it down on the fact that the branding is too close to me. And because I don't own this, I can't guarantee the quality. You guys could have a bad run or I could sell this thing out because of my name as the ambassador and people could actually assume this is my cosmetics. I'm not rooted enough in this. I'm not going to see enough of the profits. If I go run for you and make this something, if I rep your brand every time and people start to sell this out, what do I get from this? Like $500, a couple thousand dollars. I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't know. But to me personally, yeah, I wouldn't be doing it. Not for not for an ambassador. No, ma'am. Like, I would have to be the face. Make me the face. Put me on payroll. So anytime you launch a new product, it's me. Whenever you see this product, it's me. That's, that's what it would be. Am ambassador? 
There could be 25 ambassadors, but you're running around with damn near the name. Keisha representing Key Cosmetics. I mean, come on. Girl, bye. Um, and we're doing and we're doing classes with Jayla Corian. Did we forget? Like, girl, I, I totally forgot about that until just now. Um, hi, Max. Hi, Libra Queen. Good morning, guys. Everybody hit the like button for me, please. Um, yeah, I don't know. I haven't heard anything about that. I got to go tune in. I um I was enjoying Toya's vacation vlogs. That that was so much fun. Um let's see. You like the commentary. Thank you. You like the conversation. You guys, it's me. Oh. <laughs> Thank you guys. You guys are so awesome. Thank you. I enjoy the conversation and the, look, when we get together, it's powerful. When women get together and, um, we're not just talking about the boys at the end of the day, we're talking about life and we're talking about us at the end of the day, Keisha has to understand, girl, you just a hot topic, you know, and barely a hot topic. I mean, Martin has bubbled you back up. This is a story that we already know, but the on top of that, this is a story that we know because we've seen it play out. We've seen it play out on the streets. We've seen it play out with our friends and it never ends up good. At the end of the day, even if Keisha was married to someone's point, why would you go through all this with the guy that you're not married to? Cause you're weak. You know what I mean? And just because you're weak doesn't mean you're not strong. At the end of the day, you need to be a strong person to handle all this shit. But just imagine how nice it would be if you had a guy that was really for you, that was about you and wanted the best for you all of the time and would never make you look stupid in front of people. Just imagine how much you could go on with life, how much, how much freedom that you would have. It was interesting to me after I got married our daughter was almost three years old. She was two-ish um, at the time. She's getting ready to be three. And after we got married, it I felt so free because it was not a worry in the back of my mind anymore. Now, could could I come home one day and my husband is gone? Could I come home and life as I know it is not the same? Absolutely. So nothing is ever guaranteed forever. Um, because life happens. We don't know what the future holds, right? But in terms of me and what I manage, um, in terms of my thoughts, my feelings, um, my place, it was it was like, oh, okay, check, done. Absolutely, like, let's move on. Let's take it to the another level. You know what I'm saying? Um, and for someone who's been married before, which my husband was married once upon a time, so I'm his second wife, um, for us to now have surpassed the threshold of his original marriage, um, you know, I think sometimes people who've been married once before, any of you guys who've done it two and three, however many times, when you finally, and I don't want to say, from when you finally get what you want, um, I guess you guys can speak to that. I can't really speak to that because I've never been married before. Um, this is my one time. But if I experience something um, once and then I tried it again, and then now it's, uh, for whatever reason, it's a better situation. And I'm just speaking from any type of experience. Um, like if you've had a bad experience at work, you had a bad experience, whatever and you that situation falls apart you do it again and then now it's like okay i i just think that that's a, a more free it's a freeing situation if people choose to stay in the bullshit if you've ever had a job that you don't love and you leave and you're like what was i waiting for or just like me saying hi guys, hit the subscribe button. I don't know what you're waiting for. You're here. You're listening every day. You haven't hit the subscribe button. What? Caramel Queen. Hi, boo-boo. Hi, unknown, unknown. Hi, Sherelle. Good morning. Queen Nate. Hey, boo-boo. NCANT. Good morning, Ashanti. Girl, what's good? Good's good, good, good. Okay. Um, I haven't watched her in years, but I saw the disaster happening and just wanted to know 
the end and how the ridiculousness works out for her. Interesting. Yeah. And I mean, at the end of the day, this is all conversation around relationships. I mean, you guys know how I feel. If you guys are wasting time with dusty bums, then you're wasting time with dusty bums and, and you're going to, you're going to feel old. You're going to see the wrinkles. You're going to feel the disappointment. You're not going to be happy. And life is too short. Life is too good guys. Um, for whatever your beliefs are and what you think is the future holds for you, um, either here or in the hereafter at the end of the day, life here can be pretty damn good, fun and enjoyable. And why not enjoy it? Why live a life of suffering? I see Keisha as someone who tries to forget about the victim. I feel like she pulls out the, the damn martyr card. Like she wants to be Saint Keisha. And you know what? I, I just don't think, I, honestly, is the Catholic Church even doing that anymore, to be quite honest? As someone who was raised Catholic, I don't even know if we are doing that anymore. Okay, the martyr card, girl, living a life of suffering because you're choosing to live in a situation that is not conducive to a positive male-female relationship even though you have children, that's your business. Like to me, I don't feel sorry for her at all. Every day that she gets up and chooses to kiss that man, make him some eggs, toss around her, her putty cat for him. Um, let him have her bank card and all of those things. Like, I feel like that is complete and totally your business and you can't blame your bullshit on me. You know what I'm saying? No matter what I'm talking about, I'm not coming. I'm not going. I'm not sending. I'm not nothing. I'm just watching these damn videos and giving my opinion on it. That's that's how I feel about it. And and that's it. And that's all. Um, did you guys get some of the sunglasses? I know Amira did. And I saw her little unboxing. If you guys haven't seen the um, I'm sure you all have seen the Lorve sunglasses. But if you want to see a unboxing of such, go ahead. Um, it's. It's actually Amira. Um, I know she kind of tweaked her, her screen name a little bit, but we know Amira girl, let's talk, um, did it unboxing. So go check it out and, um, and, and go, go support, uh, her channel. She's been doing a lot of different content. She's still expressing herself, giving her opinion, obviously, but, um, you know, the very interesting Rob, uh, Kardashian and, uh, black China situation, where, um, you know, that's a guy who seems to be miserable, right? Um, I was actually watching a very interesting episode of a show the other day that was talking about some of the drama between um, Kendall, Jen Kendall Jenner and Rihanna and how Rihanna and Rob used to be like best friends once upon a time. Pretty interesting, and maybe we'll talk about that. I need to tag that uh, that video. I was watching it like two days ago and just could not believe what the hell was going on. Um, but that might be something fun to talk about because, you know, like, girl, we'll we'll talk about it. But anyway, back to Keisha, guys. Back to Martin. Um, I'm going to watch the rest of the episode. I will take my notes and we'll go through the whole thing like we did last time. This was just my first impressions. Once again, um, Brittany, did Brittany drop any interesting tea? Again, the thing that kind of resonated with me is that this was the first man that Keisha was like in the fucking bed with. Okay. Like she was doing it with him. I don't know. Was she actually a virgin? You guys can tell me this. Um, do you consider lesbian sex? de-virginizing yourself. Um, maybe this is the first man that penetrated her in a, in a sausage box way. I don't know. Um, but maybe that's why she's so crazy for Jeremy. Do you guys know this? Is he the first to deflower her putty cat? <laughs> I know someone out there right now might be like really grossed out at me saying it like that, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. Um, hi, Patricia. Hi, Patricia Lux. How are you? Um, let's see. Do any of you guys know Keisha paid to be on that show when she was with Skittles doing the tragic, uh, magazine cover. Miss Skittles had a friend on the show who needed extras. She threw that in Keisha's package. She paid for. Okay. Makes sense. Um, cause yeah, they don't care who shows up. Okay. Um, 
from my understanding it was Jed so Jedediah got in the box first okay wow and I'm sure how unfulfilling that was that guy looked like a complete douchebag and um that turned out to be nothing no Je Jedediah on the third day wow wow Keisha why does everybody know your business Fran, it's a snoozer. Martin has aged since um, to do these episodes. It's the lies for me. Okay. Well, let me get through the episode. I'm going to take my notes and we're just going to go boom, boom, boom. Maybe we'll just have to go chapter by chapter by chapter if you want to. If you don't, like maybe we're just good and it'll just be my um, my my reaction. Wow. Jedi did it, did a video on it. Wow, is that video still in the in the air? Is it still available? Wow. Mm -mm -mm. Keisha, some lesbian relationships use <laughs> use fake sausage, okay? Or uh, or sausage props? I don't know. He was 19, she was 23. When I was 23, would I have even spoken to a 19-year-old? I don't think I even knew where 19-year-olds were. <laughs> wow. My gosh. <laughs> well, hmm. Okay. Don't forget about the comments. Okay, so we're going to, we'll finish it up and we're going to go through the comments like we did last time. Hello, Arlene. Hello, Arlene. How are you, Ronica? What's good, lady? It was re-uploaded. Look up Jedediah and Keisha. It's on a page called We Got the Real Tea. Okay. I'm going to have to go check that. I'm surprised Keisha didn't work feverishly to get it down. <laughs> have you guys ever, I think I've asked you guys this before, and maybe if you're looking for a good movie to watch and you like Reese Witherspoon, check out the movie called Election. Election, Okay. It's about, it's high school. And any of you who have seen it know exactly what I'm talking about right now. Reese Witherspoon was relentless in her pursuit to be successful and to, she understood politics. Her mother had some sort of a job um, where maybe she worked for a politician or something. And Michelle, does Keisha not give you um, Reese Witherspoon vibes in election. Okay. And she totally ruined this man's life, her teacher, who I think she thought she, he would help her in some type of a way. Guys, remember at the end when she's like, when he basically lost everything, guys, you've got to watch this movie. Um, it's Keisha. It's Keisha. It's kind of a parallel universe to Keisha um, in high school and you've got to watch it. And just in the back of your mind, be thinking, is this how she was in high school? Like she Reese Witherspoon really deserved an award for that movie. That movie Reese Witherspoon can act her ass off. And if you didn't know from cruel intentions, okay, let's talk about that for a second. Um, but Election is an amazing movie. It's so good. And the subtext is amazing. So if you want something, if you're looking for something to watch tonight, check it out. It's so good. Um, let's see. And Michelle says, yes, absolutely. She was, she was a crazy high school girl who wanted what she wanted and, um, and made it happen. But, um, but anyway, guys, that's my first impressions of Martin's video. Um, we're watching Brittany. Brittany is coming with the deets. What I got so far was it really soaked into me that Jeremy was the first to really get up in those guts. And I think she's sick on the dick. Okay. That's number one. Number two, I think that she just is bound and determined for people to understand her martyr life and being a married woman, being with someone that you love wearing the badge of martyr and you did me wrong and he's a creep and he's a bum and having all of these people speak on your man in such a negative way. Me personally, that would drive me crazy. I don't understand how she can operate out here with Jeremy getting talked on the way that he does. Um, I don't get it. 
I just don't get it. But um, it's weird to me. And what she is hoping to get out of all of this is a mystery to me too, other than she's trying to make it to Tyler Perry, Netflix, Hulu. She's trying to do something. And, um, but this is what I would say. If you expect to sell your script, if you expect to sell your story, if you want people to take you seriously, number one, I'm going to want to see a graduation picture. Number two, I'm going to want to hear you say theater and not theater. I don't care what part of Georgia you're from, but ma'am, I'm going to need for you to work on your speech. <laughs> Um, I'm going to need for you to, girl, throw your whole entire vocabulary in the trash. <laughs> Let's just call it for what it is. Um, I'm going to need for you to finish and move into that money pit house. Can we talk about the money pit for just a second? At the At the end of the day, I don't care how much money this woman thinks she has. A house sitting empty for almost six months now that you are decorating or not even decorating, that you are renovating and still paying rent is crazy to me. I don't understand how this is not looked at as some sort of a money pit. Now, that's her money to pit into. But at the end of the day, I don't understand how you still have those two cars and the Christmas tree in the hallway, how that house is not packed up that house every day that Jeremy wakes up and he has nothing to do. He needs to be packing a box, pack a box every day. That one side bedroom that you guys pay rent for that doesn't look like anyone uses it should be filled with boxes. It should just be grab and go for the moving vans. Everything should be packed and ready to go. I wouldn't, I would have a friend with a pickup truck or every weekend I would get a U-Haul and bring the boxes and start stacking them in the basement. I would get some shelves from Lowe's and start packing up that basement or a side room or something with all of my shit. I would have that house when it's time to close on that apartment, we would have moved stuff at least once a week and got some boxes over there into the basement. If the basement is damp and it needs a, um, what do you call that thing? The thing that collects water, a de de dehumidifier. Um, I would have a dehumidifier down there and I would be pumping the water out of the air and I would have my stuff in the house. I would have him and his rusty butt friends move shit every single weekend. I would be down to two or three pots, whatever, whatever plates and whatever. I would have that room cleaned out. I would start packing up my ugly ass wardrobe and I would start getting all that shit up out that house. So when it's time to go, all I got to do is two step down to the leasing office and go and go up into my new house. Okay. Period. You got a whole storage downstairs for free. Your whole basement. Why are y'all not moving into that house? I had someone in my comments come and say that they felt like Keisha is renovating that house to flip it. I don't know. You know, I don't know. I don't know those people. I don't talk to those people. Those people are not friends of mine. I don't know anything about what's going on over there. If she's getting ready to flip it, if she's going to let real estate agent extraordinaire Jayla Corian flip it for her when Jayla gets her license, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Girl, Miss Sand said a sump pump. Okay, period. <laughs> But I'm just I'm just keeping it real guys. I'm just keeping it real. Y'all have been wonderful. I think this was so much fun. Guys, we will talk about this again. I'll watch the rest of the episode and we will close this out. Uh, Martin, um okay, we see you working over here. Martin is doing his thing thing over there dropping episode after episode. Guys, this picture I don't know. Jeremy was giving bad breath vibes, but these two are looking in each other's eyes. These two might just be partners in ratchet crime. This woman, um, at the end of the day, the bottom line is no matter what he's doing, girl, you done sold out. 
You sold all the way out to let your man uh, treat you and run you. Um, even though you think you're running him, I think he's running you and nobody's really here for it. Um, but we're watching cause it's ratchet. And my best advice is my same advice that I give all the time. Reaction videos are not for you. They are about you. If you are in the bushes right now, Keisha, I'm a need for you to hit that like button. Okay. Oh, sip. I'm a need for you to hit the like button, but I need for you to also remember reaction videos are not for you. They are about you and you don't need to be watching this stuff because ain't nobody coming for you. Ain't nobody coming. Ain't nobody going. We're just watching these videos. Okay, guys, hit the like button on your way out. Mm -hmm.